Jordan, and you're watching FSM News. Hello, and welcome to FSM News. I am Janelle Coleman. And I am Johnny Snoosom. FSM News is a product of Free Spirit Media, which is a nonprofit organization that empowers youth voice. We begin our show today highlighting a program in our special FSM News on the Road series. At Everton Township High School, there is a science program called Use STEM that shows teens how to be creative. It teaches students everything from building robots to making LED lights. Here's Mary McDonald with the story. At Evanston Township High School, an after-school program is becoming a useful tool for many students. Northwestern University's USTEM program provides students the opportunity to learn math and science in more exciting and hands-on ways. The USTEM program is a new after-school drop-in program that we're creating at Northwestern University to engage teens in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's to really give them an opportunity to have a better understanding of the world around them. Students have to complete daily challenges such as designing and building spaghetti hats or even programming robots. We program robots to programming LED lights to uh, basic like introduction to engineering. We find original ways to solve problems. Students in the youth STEM program learn the latest technology that sets them apart from other students. But it's not all serious business. They also have fun. The spaghetti structure is when you create like towers to make it to the highest with spaghetti sticks and marshmallows. Little robots just driving around little cups and people just, you know, talking and hanging out. Teamwork makes the building and designing aspects quick and enjoyable. The laid-back atmosphere and drop-in style membership keeps many coming in and staying. Reporting for FSM News, I'm Maya McDonald. Up next, FSM explores how teens can showcase their talents to the Chicago Architecture Foundation. Stay tuned. The Chicago Architecture Foundation hosts its annual competition in which the participants enter and compete as well as show off their talents from photography to various media projects. Here's Ari McDonald with the story. The 30th annual New House Architecture and Design Competition held its awards ceremony at the Harold Washington Library. High school students across the city entered drawings, photographs, building models, and various media projects. This is an important program for teens because it does a couple of things. It introduces them to the field of architecture and design. They get to work on a project that is based on a real-world issue uh, or problem or program. More than a thousand projects were submitted, so winning wasn't all glitz and glamour. It required hard work and dedication. Tonight's event was just a gathering of students coming together. Uh, we could celebrate and respect each other's work. You know, we all worked hard. What, what, what we worked on, we worked day and night, I know I did. After the ceremony, the audience traveled across the street to Robert Morris University to view the different projects. Myra Velos had a few words to describe the feeling of winning and having her work showcased to the public. Excited, happy, proud, you know, you never know, you never expect people to like what you did, so it's, you feel happy. Mariana Torres proved that even beginners can win big. I first, it's my first time entering this uh, architecture competition for photography, and I won third grand prize. Manny Warris hopes the winners get more out of the competition than just the trophy. We want them to, to come away with uh, a good experience. They want them to come away with uh, one that uh, has a lot of meaning and that they worked very hard at. And as you can see today in the work, that they have a project that they're proud of and they, they can use either as a memento of their high school experience or something they can use when they apply for a school or a graduate school or even for a job. It's something really awesome. Oh yeah, I really enjoyed doing this and yeah, I recommend it, like highly recommend it. Reporting for FSM News, I'm Aria McDonald. 
Wow, those teens are really smart. They really are. And up next, with the help of a game, the city should expect teens to make smarter choices when it comes to sex. Stay tuned. When a marine protected area is protected correctly, it makes the fish populations and the coral flourish. In an effective marine protected area, the ecosystem would flourish because nobody can go in and take out animals. It's mainly to sustain and replenish the environment because with rules and regulations in marine protected areas, it mainly places like a barrier or some type of deterrent on how much of those resources you should use. So the first step is always using it in an effective, sustainable way. Did you know that a game could change your life? The Game Changer is a program that teaches kids about safe sex. The program is teaching through what most kids like to do, which is play games. Here's the story. Operating out of the University of Chicago, the Game Changer Group brings teens and grad students together to develop an original game in order to teach youth about safe sex and public health. Game Changer is an initiative that is exploring ways in which we can use principles of game design and storytelling as well as digital media to teach young adults about sexual health but also wellness in general. Creating the card game is a long process. It goes through many revisions throughout the week and is play tested multiple times in order to eliminate flaws and make it playable. The players sort of wake up and find themselves within a dreamscape. Within their dream there are sort of a lot of worries about sexual health and about those sorts of issues. As of right now we're just getting out the finishing touches on our game and we're going to have a couple test runs to make sure that our quantitative data is correct. A key goal for the game and its creators is to reduce the social stigma around STIs, educating teens on safe sex practices, and if you have an STI, how to live with it positively. To teach young adults, teenagers, if you're going to have sex, have safe sex. We're looking a little deeper at what the real uh, enemies are. We're thinking about our attitudes, negative emotions that we have, stigmas that are associated with um, certain STIs. And these are the real things we have to battle because they create the conditions for the STIs to be contracted in the first place. While they hope teens will learn from the games, they also want players to have fun. It's something that kids have fun doing and sometimes what we notice for almost anyone, if you're playing a game, it's a really good way of breaking the ice and talking about difficult things. And so we realize that's a perfect thing. What we need is people communicating, laughing, thinking, not being afraid. Reporting for FSM News, I'm Maya McDonald. Well, it's time for us to wrap up this week's newscast, but we'll be back next week. Until then, check us out on Facebook. Search FSM News. You can also find us on ABC7 Chicago's website in the community section. Have, Have a good, good weekend. weekend.